Hi, I would like to welcome everybody to this. I'm sorry about the delay. Uh, we had some, some problems. Uh, we're going to uh, start the broadcast over. I would like to first introduce um, Fatih Ugerdog. Uger Hello there. Welcome, everybody. Uh, so this is an IEEE Computer Society distingu Distinguished Speaker Talk. And our uh, speaker is Professor Ignacio Castillo. Um, and uh, the title of the talk is Data Centers, the Cloud Computing Infrastructure as a Service. Uh, so I would like to say a few things about IEEE Computer Society. IEEE Computer Society is the world's leading um, uh, organization for computer science and engineering professionals. And I'm the 30th chapter chair of IEEE Computer Society. We actually wanted to bring Ignacio over to Turkey, uh, but then later Kerry suggested that we do a talk online. So I welcomed it and hopefully we'll bring Ignacio over to Turkey later on. Um, so uh, as the chair of IEEE Computer Society Turkey, we try to boost the number of uh, distinguished speaker talks like this one. And we try to organize as many local conferences as possible on computer science and engineering. And we try to introduce different fields such as this one to especially young professionals and students. So I want to uh, hand the microphone over to Ignacio now. Well, Dr. Fatih, thank you very much uh, for, for you and the Turkey chapter of IEEE Computer Society. Kerry, thank you very much for hosting us. Well, this talk uh, deals about data centers, the cloud computing infrastructure as a service. Well, the three parts we will offer uh, is cloud computing a general view and after we will center on data centers and some spatial applications at, at the end we will center on certifications for data centers well due to this is a virtual talk uh, in, and in order people do not sleep so fast I will run two videos after the, the part one I will run a short video and after part two I will show you a short video about real data centers. Well, let's begin. Uh, about cloud computing, we call cloud computing um, the fourth way of computing. So here is the, the a slide I, I did. I'm again 2011 and 12 using the IEEE initiatives. The IEEE Smart Cities, Internet of Things, Cloud Computing, Big Data, Smart Grid, cybersecurity, and well, we will be talking a bit about cloud computing. Well, we, we call cloud computing the fourth wave of computing. Maybe in past we remember, sorry, we will remember that everybody was talking about ISP, Internet Service Provider, but also in time people changed this terminology, the description was changed to communication service provider, and now we also can use the same letters, but having a different meaning, cloud service provider. Uh, in past, we moved from mainframes in ARPANET era, uh, after we moved to the client server architecture and after to the web and after virtualization. But around 2000, uh, something very interesting happened and people changed it to the cloud. But well, how was it defined? Or why do we move from a virtualization to cloud? Where virtualization, maybe everybody can remember in 80s and 90s, uh, virtualization was applied to RAM, disk drives, computers, servers. Uh, specifically in United States in 1998, VMware company uh, applied successfully the server virtualization, specifically under the Intel's 86 architecture. But after people say, hey, we can virtualize this. Why don't we virtualize switches and routers? And after people were beginning to think about virtualizing humans using biosciences and new materials. Well, the idea was the virtualization of everything as the Internet of Things, Internet of People, and now 
the internet of everything well maybe also we can remember in past that a lot of people were talking about software and hardware as separate entities but while the computer definition was getting better and better we can define a computer as what as a multi-level machine you see always the real machine and above the, the real machine we have too many as many as we can virtual machines so in this case this uh idea about virtualization or or doing in in a way uh, outsourcing is not new in time we have had hospital as a service restaurant as a service school transportation army as a service government as a service economy as a service security as a service and then it was moved to the everything as a service you said that x a a s everything as a service so in the computer resources it was also applied but how any technology in past in present and in future is under a specific behavior well gardeners you know the consultant company uh, try to check technology trends they uh, show uh, uh, a pattern what they call the hype cycle of gardeners you know they show at this side the visibility and in time the maturity that you can reach after five states you begin with the trigger of a specific technology the peak of inflated expectations uh, the dissolution but what we really wish is the plateau of productivity this zone and for example let's see maybe we can remember that in 2001 we have a, a, a stream change around the world but specifically in 2002 it was for computer uh, not only for computer society for computing around the world a huge crisis dot com companies fell down so cloud computing seems to be in that moment the way to recover all those dot com companies and to make a change in the computing way to offer the service so we can see that in 2007 we have a global economic crisis but check what happened in 2008 well we see after 2002 the trigger of this technology cloud computing in 2008 we were almost crossing the umbrella from the technology trigger zone or phase to the peak of inflated expectations well it was 2008 and well what kind of traditional models we were having in that age well the software as a service platform as a service and infrastructure as a service as delivery models we had you know maybe you remember google and some google applications the beta in 2004 but it was completely released in 2009 we had some other uh, very common applications not only in 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 in, in west and east we we have also china moving very fast alibaba in 2009 it was very very uh mature the whatsapp with the wet chat in china and this case no youtube in 2005 and Juku the equivalent in china on the arabic side it was very popular around the world the met uh portal who the which one it was uh, um bought by yahoo in 2009 but talking about platform as a service we had the development kits for testing, source code management, and well, but specifically in, in, in this case today, we will center on infrastructure as a service. Yes, we are talking about network technology, servers, storage, virtualization, and mainly on data centers. And now talking about virtualization, one, once every, everything or almost everything was under virtualization we also are moving under the data center virtualization we have also a deployment model well for mainly for deployment models public private hybrid and community but well let's put it all together since 2000 till 2011 hundreds of authors 
we're discussing what is cloud computing because if, if you can read uh, a number of papers everybody was offering their own definition okay so in 2011 the national institute for standardization in technology in the united states offered this huge conclusion after almost 11 years of fighting for standardizing a concept so cloud computing is basically an it model for providing computer resources on demand and low cost those two characteristics very very interesting on demand and low cost well my easy definition in many cases i say well well okay yes cloud computing is an outsourcing applied to computers and related technology uh, three other important uh things happened in that year intel added in 2011 sensors specifically sensors of uh, for temperature to xeon processors you know it was to aid data center cooling you know these processors got uh, a size of 32 nanometers also i remember in 2011 inside ieee we we pushed the ieee cloud computed initiative now it's not an in, uh, an initiative anymore a new initiative this is a very stable project also maybe we can remember 2011 the fukushima disaster they moved a plat a complete platform using infrastructure as a service platform as a service but also the software as a service this held to zero fukushima if you have the chance you could uh, access using this link but also in 2012 we pass it more to more than two exabytes so we entered definitively to the exabyte era and here we have the cloud reference architecture as you can see it's divided in three different colors what users see the user the front end the network in blue we have the cloud specific infrastructure checking the software as a service you know the cloud web applications also the combination of platform as a service and infrastructure as a service but check this we have the storage communication and the it computational resources on the other side we see the kernel hardware facilities but, but Please check from the right to the left. We have the provider now who will support the IT infrastructure. The provider also, yes, but also we have another dimension, the authentication mechanism, the management access and the services and some applications. So the, it was the cloud reference architecture. This model could be studied even for, from you said, um, for determining what kind of view do you want from cloud computing. Well, and this is what we were talking about when we used the cloud computing um, initiative uh, pushed by IEEE. They moved it with many conferences and publications. And the first magazine was this, IEEE Cloud Computing, the essential issue. No? Well, maybe some of you can remember after they moved two years after they moved to having uh transactions also if you wish to know more about the ieee cloud computing you can get to cloudcomputing.ieee.org in this case for example uh, they were dealing about the platform as a service and cloud well but as you know ieee uh together with the nist we're moving to work with two uh, standards. The P is because it was uh, uh, in the face of the project. Maybe we can't remember that in past, in order to make a portability and interoperability between computers, the standards must be developed. And after, what happened? It? Okay, it, the same effect happened with networks. Networks in past, never were talking each other but right now we have enough standards in order they can communicate each other so what's next if the next step is cloud computing then we need portability and interoperability for the cloud but also interoperability and federation inter clouds when we change not only inside a country but among 
many many countries so they have in this case some considerations uh, conducted by the IEEE Standards Association directed to the cloud computing initiative so we were talking about the combination of governments industry and universities and other uh, partners in order to offer protocols process practices and the best governance using a test bed with contributions with people from around the world well if you wish more information you have to access to these two standards well let's see what happened in 2014 what happened with cloud computing so we we as we can remember we moved it in 2002 from the innovation trigger till 2008 it passed it and whoa in 2014 we have the cloud computing in this part the disillusionment why well we will see it in in, in a few slides but also check if we are moving almost to the plateau of productivity and other kind of cloud computing whereas moving also the hybrid you know this delivery uh, model but also the huge what was pushing infrastructure as a service data centers and cloud computing well as we know cloud computing lives inside data centers and big data was the element pushing definitively the cloud computing and let's see what happened in 2015 well check this we cannot find alone anymore in 2015 the cloud computing so we see what the hybrid cloud computing also it, this year was where the internet of things got over the top and now we can see at this i've left check this this indication micro data centers we will talk briefly uh, about micro data centers what is it well, we also saw IoT platforms, the brain computer interface, and quantum computing. You know, maybe you can remember in 2002 and 2003, Chinese uh, were the, the, almost the, the pioneers in uh, using uh, the quantum computing and also in, in satellites. But well, we had something very interesting in April 2015 when the Ga Samsung Galaxy uh, smartphone xc was connected directly to the ibm watson supercomputer using big data to offer services in order to add value to the medical care so what's next well in 2015 okay again you can see moving forward micro data centers also we have another kind of cloud computing what the data broker platform as a service so it happens when you cross to the plateau of productivity and you try to check any technology as an emergent technology so new versions of that technology arise from the left to the right but well let me share with you some very famous uh, famous um, migrations what happened for example with netflix netflix was a very successful company in december 20 to 20 uh, 06 in 2007 sorry uh, they had offering a lot of streaming hours so their sites were not enough for referring this growth in their sales so check this is an exponential growth more than 1000 times in um, almost 10 years so they began the migration to the amazon web services they made a, a, a service level agreement and they began the migration in 2008 and they ended the migration in january 2016. so since that year they are completely in cloud servers they got to Amazon Web Service as cloud service provider, and they offered four nines of um, availability as a service level agreement. That means more or less 42 uh, minutes. Okay, but remember everybody, this is the theory. 
in, in real sometimes it's not fitted but well this is a uh, great news this is a very typical famous uh, migration and application well let's see why it's very important for this year let me share with you this public cloud uh, service revenue forecast remember this is a forecast of based of million dollars shared by uh, Gartner. Gartner, you know that company i have been talking about it's it it uses this forecast you know till 2021 2021 it's maybe tomorrow no so check we have another kind of delivery system the business process as a service maybe it will move check uh, platform as a service software as a service security and management services maybe some of them are moving from 1.5 in uh, and two uh, points that means double uh, a growth of, of double but check this when we are talking about infrastructure as a service we we move more than twice almost three times so it's expected you know it's a forecast that infrastructure as a service will be the industry that which um, will grow much more than before but well let's see if everything seems to be incredible fantastic for cloud computing why do not everybody moves to the cloud so let's see we have some cloud computing inhibitors we have the you know skills and people the regulatory compliance the performance integration and maturity but the winner is security and privacy so this is the main problem security and privacy you know many people even the arduinos now at universities and in some companies everybody's moving to you know arduinos the ibm and, and uh, intel applications and, and european applications asian applications everybody's moving to the cloud the internet of things moving to the cloud but if we remember we have also in 2012 and 13 the uh this surveillance systems in united kingdom mainly and united states so since 2013, we talk about the Pulse Snowden area. So this is a stop in the migration, a huge migration to the cloud. Also, the German government in 2013, after all this event, uh, declared that they were working under the data sovereignty. And what is important, the most important thing for this is to build your own data center. I hope everything is okay till this moment. And we will move to the part two, data centers. Where is the cloud? All this cloud is supported by data centers. Then we will check now in all this environment, all this ecosystem for technology, we will move to the data center specifically. Please enjoy the video. I hope it could offer a better idea this is supposedly the hugest data center around the world let me know if we have a problem Let's check the bandwidth. They center physically on this data center. As we can see, three different sources of energy. The amount of energy is really huge. 
the quantity of energy required for huge data centers. You know, we can have uh, football stadiums, and in many occasions, football stadiums are really uh, small compared with the area used by the hugest data centers. In this case, we have water cooling. There is also free cooling and many other systems for having the cooling because the high quantity of heat released from that amount of devices on systems. So as you can see, this kind of technology and industry implies what in past was covered by chemical industries mainly the oil industry well this is only for having a, a, a general idea but well uh sorry dr fatian carry uh, are, are we connected everything is okay yes everything is good okay i hope also yes. the speed is okay thank you very much yes. for both Okay, let's get into data centers. Uh, are all data centers equal? No, we have many uh, kinds of data centers. We have the enterprise data centers. This is uh, intended or located mainly for, we can see armies, governments, and mainly, you know, companies. That means a bank has a specific data center for their own proposals. So they are the owners or of their own data centers. We were talking about enterprise. Also, we can talk about exclusively on cloud, cloud services. But I will center in this occasion on collocation, what we call collocation data centers, or simply, you know, colo. Everybody say, hey, what about your colo? The, the, the contraction of the collocation. What is a collocation data center? The collocation data center is that data center that offer services to small and medium companies, which also offer services for everybody, almost everybody, uh, and not only companies, uh, small and, and medium companies. But in some occasions, they can offer services for, you know, universities uh, um, or even governments. But well, Let's see, in this case, I am showing you uh, a worldwide map of cloud servers now around the world. As you can see, uh, a huge quantity center in, uh, in, in Europe and the other side in the United States. But well, let's move to the data centers for color that the collocation again the density in numbers again europe and united states let's see there is a specific map, map around the world you know the, the, the this this growth uh, even uh, today today 2011 we have in this uh, database more than 4000 uh, data centers for color around the world in 121 countries with this kind of distribution. So let's see what happened around the world. You know, in the abstract, I, I was trying to outline how is moving it around the world in data centers, but specifically in Kaolu, no? How is it, the, the, the map and countries around the world? Well, let's center in America. Let's see um, United States, the region of the United States, till yesterday, uh, 1,724 in the 49 states. We are not considering uh, the the the, the uh, Puerto Rico and, and and Hawaii. So California, the, the as the British said, you know, the British are very uh, they commonly use what they call the short list 
five. In this case, I only use a, a short list of three, California, Texas, and New York, with th where the huge amount of these uh, color data centers are. What about Canada? Canada has 165 centered on Mo Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver. No, you know, um, very close to the border with the United States. What about Mexico? Mexico 11, obviously we are not talking uh, about all. We are talking about the registered and some of Colo. Obviously, uh, as in any country, we are not considering the enterprise uh, data centers which are uh, under the control and the ownership of all banks. Here we have for the rest of America, South America, Brazil, Argentina, Chile, and Colombia. And well, what about Europe? In Europe, most of them are centered on British. Let's see, United Kingdom, 249 centered in London, Manchester, and Leeds. Germany is the second in Europe. 189, Frankfurt, Berlin, Hamburg, France, 147, Paris, and Lyon. And after it comes the Netherlands with 95 and Italy with 68. Well, you know, uh, after is um, Spain with 55 and Portugal with 37. So let's see Turkey, my friends who host this talk. Uh, South Africa, Arabia, you know, Africa and Middle East in, in order to, to move the map. Here we have, for example, Algeria, one, Angola, Congo, Egypt. But here we have Turkey. Turkey is the leader in all this region with 47. After is coming South Africa and Saudi Arabia. So in this case, uh, you, you know, you know, uh, yes, uh, in, in some occasion when I was in Tunisia, and, uh, and in Lebanon, uh, it was very funny uh, because um, uh, some friends uh, tell me, well, well, yes, we are inside Africa, but we um, consider us as we, if we were in, in, in Europe. Was, well, we are talking about the region A as I truly consider now, A, uh, Africa and Europe. But well, we try to separate it and we see that Turkey is a leader in the zone. We have also United Arab Emirates and Israel. So Turkey is really powerful in, in the zone. Let's move to specifically to Turkey. Uh, maybe people and um, uh, members in the IEEE Computer Society uh, Turkey chapter uh, are more involved. In Istanbul, if you are in Istanbul, you can find 28 and uh, in Ankara 6 and Bursa 4 and in other cities one or two of this kind of data centers distributed in this this way obviously uh, we can have many others but this uh, those uh, data centers are registered no commercially and registered obviously we can find maybe other data centers which have not been registered in that platform. Let's see what happened in Tunisia. When I visited Tunisia, uh, okay, we can find this, the EO data center. This is very related with Europe, but also in Lebanon, in Beirut, just one. The Lebanon is for advanced information. So in future, we can hope they can increase. But what about Asia? Well, the leader there is India with 140, China with 72, 77, sorry. And you know, in China, there is another phenomenon. Uh, the information is not very easy. They, they do not share information as United Kingdom and USA does. No, 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 no. that's the, the, the point with China. Also Russia, Russia is reserved in, in the number. So we have, uh, sorry, I, uh, in Hong Kong, we have uh, 42 and in Japan, we have 43. Japan is a very specific case. They have their own uh, certifications and their own rules for data centers, but they are very, very strict. Well, and at the uh, um, and last, but now let's, we have Australia. 
In Oceania, Australia has more than 100, in Melbourne, Sydney, and Brisbane, but in New Zealand, 31, in Oakland and Christchurch, they're centered in that way. So uh, I, th I hope we can have um, uh, an, a very well outlined view about what happened around the world with this kind of data center. So my question right now is, okay, Ignacio, you have been talking to us about the cloud, about data centers in general, the, the, the huge one, but how is a small data center? Well, in this case, I will show you some photos about a data center of 22 square meters. Uh, the area for this a uh, small data center maybe this is the smallest data center you know below uh, the smallest data centers we only have what we call the sites but you need specific rules and characteristics to call a data center so in order to be certified you need at least more than 20 square meters and some elements must be considered. For example, in this hall, we can see this, you know, the white area. In this case, for example, they try to, to, to check this and, and this part, you know, the, 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 the false roof and then the, the, the false um, step zone with a, a, a dip of 60 centimeters where all the cables are moving. Well, what we have here at the left is the fire protection system under specific standards. Here we have some um, servers, switches and routers, and here we have an HP Enterprise Rack Server for storage, this disk in this case. But what about energy, the backups? No, this is a uh, Symmetry LX APC from uh, powered by Snyder, the, the backups, uh, you know, the UPS, the, the, the power systems and the backup. Why? Because every data center must have redundance, redundance in energy, redundance in servers, redundance in storage, in fire systems. And here we have the tools High, a high performance air conditioning system in order to maintain the temperature and humidity according to the standards. So you can imagine a, a square of 22 square meters. And in, in this data center, uh, people is looking for a certification, what we call the tier two. We will see in brief about certifications and standards. What does tier two means? Well, Let's see, uh, maybe you see, okay, this is at, at the right, we can see the, the, the white area and we see this window. What is through the window? Through the window, we can have the, oper the data center operation center. In this case, we have two people, two girls watching and having the management of all this data center in order to offer services to their people. In this case, we have people in a, a specific university. What do we have? Well, for the highest levels, we have, we wish this, DCIM, Data Center Infrastructure Management. So they are helped and supported by uh, monitoring systems. We will check in order to assign all the virtual machines, assign the resources, but also monitoring with sensors, everything. Well, let's see, in this case, uh, we see they use VMware, this uh, operations manager indicating, you know, the, the capacity. What is, in this case, they only have for a specific uh, infrastructure, almost the 20% of the capacity to deliver the use of CPU, memory, the workload, and metrics and workload. So they monitor all the development and the operations inside the data center. But well, what happened with the rest? Okay, in this case, this provider uses a kind of watchdog using sensors for temperature, humidity, uh, water, le le even lever uh, the, the air, the level of humidity in the air, the level of uh, uh, this noise, uh, you know, 
a lot of sensors temperature they try to monitor all the environment how is the state of everything so let's see that's what we have in a small data center so now multiply it by thousands of times when you find a huge data center and well let's see this other video another very important data center you know in this case you will see data center because this video uh, is, was developed by you know people in united kingdom you know people in us use center and people in united kingdom use center well this is another interesting thing okay please everybody don't sleep we got another small movie today the world is inhabited by a vast amount of data rapidly growing the amount doubles every 18 months by 2015 european countries will use 100 terawatts per hour on powering data centers alone this equals the consumption of 8 million homes and did you know that the computer industry is responsible for as much as two percent of the world's co2 emissions through its natural resources, Norway is capable of producing inexpensive renewable energy. Inside a mountain, on the west coast of Norway, you will find the world's greenest data center. Operating solely on renewable energy, Green Mountain Data Center has virtually no CO2 emissions and leaves no carbon footprint. By utilizing three independent power connections, our center has a very high level of redundancy and resilience. The combination of Norwegian weather and geography makes the country a unique supplier of low-cost renewable energy. The Green Mountain Data Center is adjacent to a fjord that provides year-round free cooling. This reduces the center's PUE to a world-class low. Combining low consumption and low energy costs, the total cost of operation is reduced by 20 to 30%. Being a former NATO ammunition storage, the facility offers the highest level of security. We are highly protected against events such as electromagnetic pulses, flooding, or fire. Our facility space consists of a total of 21,500 square meters. The center lies next to the Norwegian oil capital of Stavanger. From here, High capacity fiber lines connect to POPs within Norway, the UK and continental Europe. The partners behind Green Mountain represent some of the best industrial and technological know-how in Norway. Ergo Group is a provider of ITC services and the largest of its kind in Norway. Lisa is the largest multi-utility company. So, well, as we can see, uh, a number of companies are around this huge data center well we are by choosing green Mountain, almost at the end of our talk you are guaranteed a stable as a rock we will enter cost efficiency a green to the certification leaves no carbon zone. Footprint, and constant and continuous operation for the foreseeable future green mountain data center if nature could choose well let's move but before we check data center for special applications in past uh, when 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 china's people were trying to offer specific solutions for for oil industry for example you, as you can see in this in this picture we have one very small maybe we maybe you everybody remember the the graph in 2015 and 16 about the micro data centers what we can see in yellow this this yellow now this yellow this yellow we see a container we have this uh, branch atom atom is 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 offered by a mexican company uh kio M maybe the hugest even hugest than telmex the company where, where i work at uh, maybe a lot of people know 
Carlos Slim, now the, the company, the owner of, of this company of uh, uh, America Telecom. Well, in this case, he offers this data center, you know, the air openers. Uh, this is a container. Chinese people were the pioneers of offering the services. And then after around the world, every people, every company, sorry, uh, offers this kind of data center for oil platforms. So many companies offer this kind of platforms. You wish, for example, to make a study about uh, oil platforms or other kind of resources you can rent for as a service, you know, data center as a service for one, two or three weeks or the time you need. Okay, in this case, uh, 10 years before I was talking about uh, how to improve the way of making it better when uh, cooling the servers were just in in the middle of August or November in 2015, Microsoft pushed this project and they moved um, a capsule with 300 servers, not to dip, but three feet underwater for more than 100 days and they got this experiment successful. As you can see, obviously the cooling was even better. Microsoft specifically has a bit more than 100 data centers around the world. This project was named Natic Data Center Project if you wish to make a deeper consult about how it was developed. So in this case, they have the resources, they apply that kind of ideas. Obviously, well, we, we have this other application. Let's see, for example, in Puebla, Mexico, uh, we have a, a, an international experiment, the Large Millimeter Telescope. This is a, a, a co-working between Mexico and United States, but uh, information is also shared for around, around the world. It's about, um, you know, uh, checking radiation from galaxies, but also measuring uh, high um, energy particles. So I'm here. Uh, we are uh, we were at 4,600 meters in altitude. And where, as you know, how can you uh, make the data analysis at this altitude? even where the radiation is stronger than at the level of the sea or 2,000 meters. So this is a special case, so they need a special uh, data center. Uh, they really have right now a site and they are trying to move to a data center because it's very costly to move information, to take the information to be, uh, study it, analyze it in other uh, altitude. You know, even helicopters only get to 3,000 meters, not above. No, even we are talking about the best helicopters in the world. So also we can have the data centers in space. Okay, talking about the data centers in space in future, uh, you know, we have, uh, since 2010, we have the, in the, uh, the internet, of the interplanetary that means uh, since 2010 we have routers around the the planet but the idea is to expand having routers moving around the moon and mars so it is expected that in 2040 we can have complete connectivity with mars and the moon but we have two choices one choice for next generations could be building a data, data center in the moon or, or even in, in Mars, or the other one is having data centers in space. Yes, as if it were satellites, but really, really, they were having or offering a pre-process for the information. So this is what it's moving for the interplanetary internet. And for the last part, we move to international standards for data centers and certifications. In this case, for example, the first one was the Uptime Institute. Uh, 
Uh, the headquarter is in United Kingdom, but also we have the International Computer Room Expert Association. It was born in Mexico and it's more centered to Latin America, but also in Spain and in, also in other countries. But, you know, uh, uh, we will see uh, what it's still about certifications. And specifically, I have talked to you about Kio. This company in Mexico, they have 32 data centers, 16 with tier four certification and 16 with tier three certifications. They are very competitive. They have a number in Mexico, but also in United States, Panama, Guatemala, the Dominican Republic, but also in Spain. So they use the uptime certifications, but also the ICREA certifications. In a practical case, for example, Kio, as a general, you know, a general wish to have as many certifications as I can, as, as they can. The SAP, you know, different operations and hosting services, ETL, SAI, the tier four and, 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 and three, VMware, uh, the best companies for, for, as a working place, Google Partner, Intel Partner, uh, SAP again, LEED. LEED is a uh, United, uh, United Kingdom certification for intelligent buildings. NISA, in, uh, but also CEDA. These two CEDA, silver and gold, are offered by the company I work for. That means Data Center Dynamics also. They had the headquarters in the United Kingdom and it's delivered for the rest of the world in, in, in different uh, places. So this is the specific case of a general wishing as much certifications as they can have. So specifically, let's center on certifications for data centers. Optum Institute was founded in 1993. You know, in that time, they were offering certification only for design documents, but also for constructed facility. So you can see this tier certification, for example, three, tier three, the, for design, but also for facility. In past, they never offer certification about operations. Now they were pushed by these other international um, institution. And since 2010, they moved it to, cert to make the certification about the operational sustainability. They applied in a good number of countries. But what it means about or talking about tier one, tier two, tier three, and tier four, you know, remember, tier one is the basic capacity in everything, infrastructure, talking about IT systems, the power, and everything, energy, fires, this is the basic. Tier two is talking about redundancy in all capacity of components. So it could be for cooling, for power. But really, if you really, really want uh, uh, better uh, availability, you know, this is like one nine, two nines, three nines, and tier four means four nines of availability, considering a year. So for tier three, you must consider tier two plus redundancy in all, case, in, 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 in all cases. But the start is tier four. That means your data center must work as a full tolerance. So you can have maintenance as uh, with no interruptions. No, this is, for example, the case of the, the two videos we saw, the data center of the two videos we saw, they are related to this at tier four with the full tolerance of 99.99 and 5%. That means just some hours a day for failure. Even in this level, we are talking about 52 minutes a year to be out of service. Less is not a tolerance. So that's the idea. Let's see, for example, around the world again, as a United Kingdom headquarters institute, they move it much more in Europe, but also in, 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 in the rest of the world. So what about the other, the International Computer Room Expert Association? Well, 
This institution has a headquarter in Mexico and it was founded in 1999 and they create a standard which is updated every two years. Obviously, this industry is very competitive and it includes everything. So this is standard, the 131 uh, with the, the last version, 2017, this international standard. And well, it's a set of recommendations for best practices mainly, no? They attack obviously electrical inst installations, the facilities, communications, air conditioning, fire, security, IT governance, and environment. What if you build a data center in a place with a lot of headquarters, then you have, if you have a specific place, you know, the, the, the level of eight in, in the scale of headquarters, you have to build data centers for supporting 10 or 11, no, or even 12 as in Japan, for example. So what are the levels created by ICREA? So in this case, they have five levels, you know, it's driven by the number of nines. So the number five, the level five, that's what we call the high security, high availability, high security, safety, world-class, quality assurance data center. That's the entire name for the level five of ICREA level. With five nines that means a bit more than the uptime institute that was the reason because uptime institute began to offer the operation in this case icrea offers certification about the operation they do not certify the design or the const of the construction of the facilities so the both certifications for companies are complementary well I'm at the end of the presentation. Uh, mainly conclusions are from you, but in the final slide, I have to say that this process northern era or age has changed some things and it's making the infrastructure as a service as something not only to be as um, not sourcing service. It is a need for the data sovereignty pushed by Germany that a country need to have their own data centers. That means data centers inside your country. Obviously, it sometimes it's not very easy for countries which not too much economic power. About information, the point is it's growing as a madness. Now, imagine 2007, we had 20 exabytes in 2012, Setabytes in 2020, it's expected 50 times more. So we're talking, we are in the setabyte era. The main problem with big data and with uh, data analytics is that around the world, less than 1% of all information is analyzed. So a lot of information has been stored. But, you know, we are spending a lot of in storage, but analyze it not too much well with videos and audios is a bit different thing so it will be a lot of investment in high performance analytics what we call the big data analytics so it's a huge business and it will increase and we will see how the phases of cloud computing will continue changing with infrastructure as a service well everybody thank you for attending for this talk uh, between our institutions, IEEE Computer Society, and mainly I want to thank to the Computer Society, Turkey chapter, Dr. Fatih and Carrie for hosting us. I don't know if you have some words to share. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure. Are we on time? Uh, yes, we are. Do you have a few moments for questions? Yes, sir. Okay, there is um, one question coming from NS. Uh, and this goes back to your um, slide that had the, the image of the data centers in Turkey. And uh, NS would like to know how many um, data centers are in Izmir, Turkey, if you happen to know that. Sorry, we, we are in the... Okay, are we checking the, the Turkey? Yes, Istanbul, yes. Ankara and... Um... So, sorry, the question is, is Mira? Is Mira Turkey, yes. 
Smear Turkey, let me check a specific three. 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 So please let me let me show you. Let me show you. Where can you find? I will out the presentation. I'm sharing still the, the okay. Let me in order everybody can check. This is Business and everybody, if you wish to move to this part, please try to go to this www.datacentermap.com. Are you following me? Yes, Again. it's showing up. That it's joined, not separated. Here, datacentermap.com. So immediately it will appear this. Let's move here view as a map here i will check here all the countries are listed we can go to turkey 47 you know they are changing this content constantly and sorry again the the city was izmir i z m i r three three yes izmir he was say three oh, okay. i remember well but let's see let's view specifically izmir Let's see where can you find, okay? Here is the address, Eurota Internet, Eurota Internet Services, Serbets Liman Volgets, sorry for my pronunciation, Konak, Turkey. Here is the address. Here you can find the address to visit the place. Here we have Bornova, Turkey. The company is NetDirect IS. And here they are telling you that Inedmart and other companies hosting more than 50,000 websites and with more than 1,500 services. Yes, here. And we have this one else, the Saglayizin Izmir, number one. Also in Bayrakir, Turkey. So if you enter to this, you will see details and address and you can ask them to be received. No, so we have three companies. So I hope I, I I have I have answered the question. Please, yeah. everybody, if you are interested, www.datacentermap.com, and they are updating the information day by day. Okay, and thank we you have, very much for asking. We have a couple of more questions from uh, Jihan, um, and yeah. this one is regarding the backup energy sources in case of power failure. Is there any time definitions? And how long should a system be able to operate in case of power grid fails, as an example? Okay, it's immediately, it's in real time. That's the reason, because for example, if, if you are a bank, all banks move to tier four. All banks move to tier four or ICREA five. That means multi-redundance, not failure, and the change you, you mean, you at, at least you need three different sources of energy. If one fails, immediately all the systems change in real time. Because, you know, this industry must be better than the industry in, uh, in the air. You know, the, the airplanes, as you know, airplanes used to work with what? Uh, with uh, Sigma 6. Six Sigma. Are we having problems? No, we're good. No, okay, okay. So, you know, the air, in this case, air, airplane industry uses Six Sigma. That means 3.5 failures for each 1 million of opportunities. That means for each 1 million of flies around the world, it's almost secure that you will have 3.5 failures. But well, nobody wished to be in that, uh, nobody wished to be uh, part of this 3.5. So for data centers, for banks specifically, they must go beyond. So this is very strict if you are in the zone of the ICREA 5 or tier 5. But, if, but this is very expensive. So in this case, not everybody goes to that levels. So some smaller companies go to tier three 
or ICREA 4. It depends. In Mexico, for example, we have only two universities interested in uh, the certification in tier one for their data, data centers at universities. But, you know, this certification is given year by year. So it's really expensive. Um, Are we okay? Yes, no, we're fine. Uh, the issue, I think, is is just with your your computer because you've got me spinning around in circles there. Oh yes, um, yes, perfect. <laughs> so the next question is for the data data centers in space. Wouldn't the extreme temperature changes yes. as well as the solar in a, uh, instabilities be challenges? Yes, yes, that's the point. That's the point. I, I'm I'm uh, working a bit in. Uh, with people in France, in, in Grenoble, because they have a specific uh, study group. Because you know, now the, the cheaper satellites using electronic coast, no, the low cost, and they say, okay, maybe radiation will impact, but at the end of the day, my satellite will be in, in, in uh, functioning for three years. So they are trying to use these devices. Obviously, high energy uh, impact their devices and they can change the, 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 the data, no? But now we have uh, around the world very well know, uh, knowledge about satellites. So the idea is now having more than the than this, just the satellite and having a, a container or even middle of the container. But yes, obviously, yes, you, uh, you, you're right. Uh, the high impact, the impact of high energy particles is a mess. It's a problem. The same that we'll have the, the not only the equipments, but also the humans. So we have to decide. Some companies have and and, and governments have to decide if putting the data small data centers, a number of small data centers in space, or having data centers inside Moon or inside Mars. So gen new generations will see that. OK, and I think this will probably be our last question since uh, we're going long and we don't want to keep you um, for too long. Uh, so no problem for me. I'm this happy. Last, this last question is, um, I have a question reg regarding Microsoft Project Nautic, uh, which is an undersea data center. In yes. terms of infrastructure and maintenance cost, is it feasible? to build data centers under the sea? Well, yes, but this is a very specific kind of uh, data centers. And imagine, for example, the idea is, uh, as you saw in, in the case of the, the, the Green Mountain, it will support any change in the sun, uh, not only cyber attacks, also wars. So in many cases, governments are using uh real bunkers for war no even for nuclear war in some countries the richest one some data centers are very deep inside and they are prepared uh, uh, for uh for uh, having enough uh resistance against nuclear attacks no really bunkers so the other idea is having data centers inside the sea. This point is for cooling, because as you see uh, before, the amount of energy is really a problem. In some parts in, in, in Europe, uh, for example, Google and uh, Facebook offer the hot water to the town. Why? Because the quantity of, of heat that you have to take away from the data centers is really amazing. So even, for example, in this case, maybe you can remember that Chinese, in, in the last case, the case, they moved their, their ships from China to maybe United States or other countries moving and having people inside working day by day or, or, or during the, the, the three blocks each eight hours. And they now move inside the ships also data centers. The easy way, the, the, the advantage is to have what? The water of the ocean. Obviously, what they have to do is to clean that water. But they could use 
chillers and other technologies. And that could be the reason. So people is trying to look any solution in order to reduce the energy spent for removing the heat in data centers. Okay, very good. Um, Fatih, do you have anything that you would like to say from here? Uh, no, nothing to add. I think it was a great talk, very informative. Uh, I think I'll be looking at this um, URL, datacentermap.com, after we hang up. <laughs> okay, great. Okay. Well, thank you. Well, thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. Thank you to all the audience also. It was great having you guys, and uh, I hope that thank we'll you. have Thank you, Ignacio. Thank, thank you, Kerry. Thank you, Kerry. and everybody in Turkey. Thank you, Kerry. So have a great day. Thank you very much. Bye. Okay, you too.